How would the story of Bleach change if Ichigo had never been born? Or there was nobody masterminding sending Rukia to the world of the living for their own nefarious purposes? In this video, I'll be breaking down the impact of the actions of Sosuke Aizen, the former captain of the 5th Division. Over the course of the Bleach story, Aizen had woven an intricate web of deceit, as well as ruining the lives of several individuals. But with this video, I'm going to explore the possibility of an alternative universe within Bleach where Aizen no longer betrays the Soul Society and how much of an impact that this single change would have on the story of Bleach. I'm going to be using information from the Bleach manga as well as the light novels in order to understand just how many characters lives would have turned out differently if Aizen did not turn out to be such a traitor. Be sure to stick around until the very end of this video as I'll be speculating about how Ichigo may not have been born at all if it wasn't for the actions of Aizen and I'll also be theorizing about an alternative antagonist who would have risen to the forefront front if Aizen did not carry out his evil plans. So without further delay, here is my video discussing what if Aizen had remained loyal to the Soul Society. <laughs> Discover the Undead Collection and be amongst the very first to join us on our journey over at Getsugar.com. Aizen is first introduced within chapter 79 of the manga as the captain of the 5th division. Understandably, he's a man who wields great authority and he is very respected by his peers. He is portrayed to have a gentle demeanor and he is very soft spoken and he seems to get along with everyone. Now in this hypothetical scenario where Aizen doesn't betray the Soul Society, we have to accept this idea that he is not dangerously manipulative. And this first impression of Aizen that we receive from the manga is actually the true nature of Aizen. Aizen's motive for betraying the Soul Society was revealed to us in chapter 421, where we learn that Aizen is frankly disgusted by the existence of the Soul King. He refuses to be led by a linchpin who holds no control over reality. He disregards the Soul King to such an extent that he believes that the throne that the Soul King is sat on is vacant. Kubo never really reveals to us how Aizen had come to learn the truth about the Soul King. Because of his rejection of the Soul King, he desires to sit on top of the heavens as the worthy the ruler of reality. So, for Aizen to remain loyal to the Soul Society, this critical aspect of his character needs to be changed. So, let's assume that Aizen never gets to know the truth about the nature of the Soul King, and thus he doesn't go on to create the Hokyoku and later build his own Aranka army to overthrow the Gotei 13, as well as planning to create the Oken to enter into the Royal Palace. Let's go step by step with an in depth analysis to understand how Bleach's story would be affected if Aizen had remained loyal to the Soul Society and did not form his desire to sit on top of the heavens. The first individual whose life and destiny would have been impacted the most by Aizen staying loyal to the Gotei 13 would have been none other than Kaname Tozen. We are aware from the Can't Fear Your Own World light novels that Tozen had elevated Aizen to the point that Aizen was pretty much a god in his mind. Within chapter 148 of the manga, a brief glimpse is revealed about Tozen's backstory. We learn that Tozen was a close friend to a young female Shinigami called Kakyo. She eventually would go on to marry a man from one of the five great noble families called Tokinada Sunayashiro. Unfortunately, Kakyo was eventually killed by her own husband. It was revealed that Tokinada ended up killing someone over some trivial argument. Then he went on to kill his own wife Kakyo for daring to say that he did something wrong. Tozen was aware that Kakyo had longed for peace and she had a strong sense of justice. Despite all of these setbacks that she had in her life, she remained firm in her conviction for justice. But unfortunately, Kakyo never had a chance to fight for what she believed in. And following her murder, no real justice was handed out because the nobleman Tokinada had walked away without so much as a slap on the wrist. Within the Can't Fear Your Own World light novels, Aizen was present right after Kaname's failed attempts to appeal for an audience with the Central 46. Tozen had wanted proper justice to be carried out and for Tokinada to pay for what he had done to Kakyo. When Tokinada had learned about Tozen's desire to speak with the Central 46, he had ordered several guards to take Tozen away and to beat him up. But thankfully, Aizen was there and he had spiked the drinks of the guards with alcohol and they eventually ended up fighting each other and thus sparing Tozen. While Aizen says that the drinks were spiked, it was most likely as a result of him using Kyokasu Getsu on the guards. The light novels do offer us a very clear glimpse into Tozen's mindset here before he had decided to follow Aizen. Tozen did not really have a cause of his own to follow 
follow and he was unsure about the right way to get justice for the murder of his friend. Aizen really helped Tozen by offering him a path to follow in order for him to get revenge against the Soul Society, who Tozen believes had allowed the murderer of his close friend to have gotten away with the crime. Tozen initially hesitated to join Aizen. We learn about what he was going through as he states that he is frightened. He tells Aizen that he hates the Shinigami and the world that they live in where they have their way. Tozen's sense of justice here wasn't completely warped as he still admitted that he didn't have the qualifications to condemn the entire world because he was aware that he was acting out of a desire to avenge the death of his friend. We see Tozen staring at the dead body of Kakyo as he states to himself that he wishes for power. He wants power in order to impose peace upon the world. If justice was lacking in the world, then Tozen would become justice itself. When Aizen had met Tozen, this is exactly what he had offered to him. He had offered a way for him to gain power and to act out his desire. The Can't Fear Own World light novels make it abundantly clear that it was through Aizen that Tozen had come to have knowledge about the Soul King and how he was created as a linchpin by the five great noble families. In a world where Aizen does not betray the Soul Society, Tozen would have no knowledge about the Soul King. His childhood friend Kakyo would still have been killed, but I think that Tozen would have calmed down in his path for revenge and he would have simply just become a Shinigami in order to better the system from the inside. In chapter 385, Tozen admits to Komamura that he was becoming slightly complacent in his new life as a captain and he had started to lose sight of his true purpose for revenge. Tozen's biggest fear was assimilating and dying as a Shinigami. Tozen did not want to die as a Shinigami who was a part of the system. He had wanted to enact a major change so that his sense of justice could have been carried out within the world. The justice that was lacking when Kakyo was murdered. Without Aizen's involvement, I believe that Tozen would have still been against the Soul Society to some degree, but I don't think that it would have been to such an extent that he would betray the Soul Society later. Tozen's main aim was to get revenge against Tokinada. I think Tozen's path for revenge would have been heavily swayed by the influence of his fellow captain Seijin Komamura. So ultimately, without Aizen's involvement, Tozen would not have gained any holification powers, and he most likely would have slowly started to assimilate into the life of a Shinigami, and he most likely would have learned to accept and overcome his feelings for revenge, thanks to the influence of individuals like Komamura and Hisagi. Moving on from Tozen, the institution that was most affected by Aizen's betrayal is the Central 46. Remember in chapter 168, it was discovered that the entirety of the Central 46 had been murdered. This institution is the highest authority within the Soul Society. It is well known by now that one of the reasons that Aizen had massacred the Central 46 was so that he could orchestrate and send out false orders under their name, and also so that he could gain access to under the Central 46 chambers where the Great Archive is located. Now this Great Spirit Library houses a massive amount of knowledge, including details about the entire history of the Soul Society. After Aizen had defected from the Soul Society, Ukitake was placed in charge of finding out what Aizen was researching from the library. Ukitake learned that Aizen had accessed a lot of data on the Hokyoku and the Oken. The Central 46 is made up of 40 sages and 6 judges. Within the light novel beginning of the revive of tomorrow, one of the sages is a young woman named Nayura. She admits to Kira that the Central 46 was far from a perfect institution. In her own words, the Central 46 had made several irrational decisions in the past which had pitted Shinigami against one another, and they had made decisions which had favoured the nobles and their politics. We've already talked about one such bad decision that they made when they decided to let Tokinada off for killing his wife. Their decisions were so irrational that nobody had batted an eyelid when Aizen had made up the fake order from the Central 46 to execute Rukia. It was just accepted as another irrational decision by the Central 46. Nayura's father was among the members of the Central 46 who were murdered by Aizen. Following Nayura's appointment, the young lady had gone out of her way to learn more about Rukongai and the human world. So if Aizen had never betrayed the Soul Society, then the Central 46 will still be an institution which is made up of old men who have never bothered to venture outside of the Serete. It's for this reason that the Central 46 didn't really represent the Shinigami and the residents of Rukongai because they didn't know about their problems. So if it wasn't for Aizen murdering the Central 46, then they would still be a backwards institution. After Shaz Domino attacks the Central 46 compound during the Thousand Year Blood War arc, Nayura is helplessly lying on the ground. While she feels despair, she says to herself that the Central 46 were scared of changing values. They were terrified of being left behind by the Shinigami, who had 
kept evolving and interacting with the human world. That's why the Central 46 had decided to halt the progress of the Shinigami and to prevent them from interacting with the human world. These Central 46 were desperate for their rulings to be absolute. Nayura thinks that it's hilarious that they refer to themselves as the eyes of the Soul King, when even the Soul King continues to accept that the world is ever-changing. After Kira defeats Shaz Domino, Nayura proclaims to the other sages that from now on the Central 46 must start moving as a new system. This is to prove that the residents of Rukongai and the human world inhabitants are not worthless. After all, the Shinigami are working hard to protect them so their life holds a lot of value. It's safe to conclude that if Aizen had not massacred Nayura's father and the other old sages, then people like Nayura would have had no chance to change the old mindset of the Central 46. Now moving on, the relationship between Rangiku Matsumoto and Genichimaru would have been definitely more stable if Aizen had not betrayed the Shinigami. At the end of the Soul Society arc, Gin is revealed to be a traitor. He leaves for Huekomundo with Aizen and Tozen. As he ascends into the sky, he tells Rangiku that he wouldn't have minded being her prisoner for a while longer. This is one of the earlier hints within the series that Rangiku and Gin shared a very close relationship. In chapter 415, we learn more about Gin's true motives and how Aizen had affected his relationship with Rangiku. Gin recalls a time when he was just a child living within the Rukongai district. One night, he had stumbled upon Aizen and three of the Shinigami as these three men were handing to Aizen a special fragment of Rangiku's soul, as Aizen had then fed this fragment to the Hokyoku. It is revealed that Rangiku had in fact a fragment of the Soul King within her. These Soul King fragments are randomly inherited via the cycle of reincarnation. Rangiku was born in possession of such a fragment, and when Gin had learnt about what Aizen had done to Rangiku, he had vowed to kill him. It's for this sake of revenge that he sacrifices his relationship with Rangiku, but if Aizen had remained a good guy, then Gin would have never had to join him, and incidentally, he wouldn't have had to commit so many horrible crimes. During the Ten Back the Pendulum arc, Aizen witnesses Gin as a child kill the third seat of the fifth division. If Aizen did not interfere with Rangiku's life, then I think that Gin and Rangiku would have become Shinigami out of a desire to have more of a stable life. And Gin was known to be a prodigy, so he would have naturally risen into the high ranks of the Gotei 13 anyway. And if Rangiku had retained her Soul King fragment, then she may have been strong enough to even become a captain. And maybe Hitsugaya would have been her lieutenant instead. It's definitely fascinating to speculate upon the influence of Aizen on the lives of Gin and Rangiku, and how if he was just a good guy, things would have turned out very differently for the two of them. It's insane to think about how many lives were affected by Aizen. During the Ten Back the Pendulum arc, we learn about how the lives of Urahara, Tessai, Yoriichi, and the Vizards were forever affected by Aizen's evil acts. We know that Urahara and Tessai were arrested by the Central 46, and they were charged with the crimes of holification. Yoriichi ends up saving them, and along with the Vizards, they escape to the world of the living. If it wasn't for Aizen, Urahara, Yoriichi, Tessai, and the Vizards would still be stationed within the Soul Society. They wouldn't have been holified and transformed into Vizards, and it's highly likely that they would still retain their positions within the Gotei 13 as captains and lieutenants respectively. Nobody would have been exiled or branded as a criminal by the Soul Society. It's very likely that if Urahara had stayed within the Soul Society, then it's very likely that he may have been promoted to join the Royal Guard. With Aizen being a good guy, then there would have been only one Hokyoku. Urahara had created the Hokyoku as a substance that instantly destroys the boundaries between a Shinigami and a Hollow. In chapter 416, it's later revealed that Aizen had continued to research the Hokyoku as a tool to assist him with his goal of overthrowing the Soul King. When Aizen's Hokyoku was proving to be a failure, he had decided to sacrifice the souls of hundreds of Shinigami and residents of Rukongai in order to feed them to his Hokyoku. If Aizen didn't end up creating his own Hokyoku, then the hundreds of souls and the Shinigami that were sacrificed to the Hokyoku would have continued on living. In addition to this, his Sagi may not have been saved from a hollow by Kensei. This is because Kensei and the members of the 9th Division would not have gone out to investigate the disappearances of Rukongai residents. And even if he did survive the hollow attack, he would never have gotten that tattoo on his face, which he had done as a way to pay homage to Kensei, who he had quickly started to look up to. In addition to this, the hollow metastasia was a product of Aizen's holification experiments. And we know that this is the hollow that ended up killing the wife of Kain Shiba, and then later killing Kain himself. In chapter 135, we learn that it has the ability to destroy a Shinigami Zanpakuto and to fuse with their body. If Aizen had not betrayed the Gotei 13 with his experiments, it's likely 
that Kind Shiba, his wife, and the men under Kind's command would still be alive. At this point, Kind may have become the captain of the 13th division, as Ukitake would then have been allowed to retire in peace. It's learnt during the light novel We Do Not Always Love You that Ukitake was planning on retiring. This would have meant that Rukia would not have had to go through all of that trauma linked to Kind's death, and it's very likely that she would have remained as Kind's lieutenant for quite a long time. Another major institution of the Soul Society which was impacted by Aizen was the Shinigami Research and Development Institute. We all know that this was founded by Kisuke Urohara, and the only reason why Mayuri is now in charge of the Research and Development Institute and why he is the captain of the 12th division is because Urohara was exiled to the world of the living. Mayuri had only agreed to be Urohara's assistant on the condition that if anything would happen to Urohara, then Mayuri would inherit everything that Urohara has created. But if Aizen doesn't betray the Gotei 13, then Mayuri would still be working under Urohara within the Shinigami Research and Development Institute. There's every chance that Nemu would not have been created, as we learn in chapter 642 that she is one of eight generations of artificial souls which were created by Mayuri. She was created from a combination of a artificial body and a artificial soul. In addition to this, if Mayuri never became the captain of the 12th division, then there's every chance that Soken Ishida, Uryu's grandfather, would still be alive as the Shinigami would have arrived on time to help him with the group of hollows that he was fighting, so he wouldn't have died and then been experimented upon by the Research and Development Institute. One of the biggest implications of Aizen not betraying the Gotei 13 will be the possibility that Ichigo Kurosaki may not have even been born in the first place. During the Everything But The Rain flashback arc, we learned that Ishin was the former captain of the 10th division, and he is a member of the Shiba clan. Ishin is tasked to investigate the mysterious deaths of three Shinigami in a mid-sized area called Naruki City. Within chapter 531, Ishin fights against the artificial hollow named White. Now you guessed it, White was a product of Aizen's holification experiments. The hollow ended up being defeated by Masaki and Ishin, and the two then parted ways until Masaki had started to be holified. Urahara had got involved, and in order to save her life, Ishin had to tether his soul to hers. This meant that Ishin would have to remain within the world of the living until Masaki dies, resulting in him losing everything that he has within the Soul Society. So later, when Ichigo was born, traces of White's power were inherited by Ichigo. If Aizen remained loyal, then he wouldn't have conducted his holification experiments, and it's unlikely that Ishin would have been sent to the world of the living. Masaki would have remained a pure Quincy, and she would have gone on to marry Ryuken, Uryu wouldn't have been born, Ichigo wouldn't have been born, and Ishin would still be the captain of the 10th division. Next, of course, we have to talk about the Arankas. If Aizen didn't do any holification experiments or create his Hokyoku, then none of the hollows would have been transformed into fully evolved Arankas. An Aranka is a hollow that has gained a humanoid form and can also wield a Zanpakuto. When it comes to hollows, only Vastal Lorde class hollows have a humanoid form. But thanks to the Hokyoku, Aizen was able to give a humanoid form to any hollow by transforming them into an Aranka. He was effectively giving them a rebirth. In chapter 188, we learned that the hollows had been stuck at the same level of power for decades. This is until Aizen had showed up within Hueco Mundo. He effectively helped several hollows to power up via transforming them, and this had resulted in the birth of characters like Grimjow, Nell, and Haribel. Without Aizen defecting from the Soul Society, none of these characters would have existed, and Hueco Mundo would have still been governed by Barragan to this day. Now, another character who would have definitely been impacted by Aizen remaining loyal is Rukia. At the beginning of Bleach, Rukia had a very strained relationship with Renji, but Renji was meaning to fix this by announcing to her that he had just attained the position of lieutenant. But Rukia, of course, was leaving on an assignment to the World of the Living, where she was stationed within Karakura Town for a month or so. So Renji decided that he was going to tell Rukia about his promotion after she comes back. But of course, thanks to Aizen's intervention, Rukia loses her powers, Urahara stores his Hokyoku within her body, and all of this leads to her being sentenced for execution. Without Aizen's involvement, Rukia would have simply returned from her mission from the world of the living, Renji and Rukia would have rekindled their friendship, while Rukia would have still mended her bond with Renji, I think that her and Byakuya's relationship would still be strained. Because after all, it was thanks to Ichigo's conviction to save Rukia, which resulted in Byakuya having that come-to-Jesus moment, 
point where he realizes that Rukia is far more important than preserving the law and order of the Soul Society. Whatever the case may be, Byakuya would have definitely been dismissive of Rukia for quite a long time, and the events that happen in chapter 179, where he reveals to Rukia that his deceased wife was Rukia's older sister, just would not have happened. Another group of characters who have been affected by Aizen's actions are Hisagi, Momo, Renji, and Kira. In chapter minus 17, it's revealed that Renji, Momo, and Kira were in a class of elite students. During a field trip to the world of the living, they were attacked by a group of hollows that had a abnormal ability to conceal their spiritual pressure. These hollows, of course, were as a result of Aizen's holification experiments. If Aizen did not create these hollows, then Hisagi would not have suffered the injuries that he did that night, and his friend Kanizawa would not have been killed. In chapter 384, Hisagi admits to Tozen that he was afraid to fight ever since that night. Head Captain Yamamoto was massively impacted by Aizen's betrayal because during the Aranka arc, he actually loses his arm to Aizen. Another character who hated Aizen with a passion following his betrayal was none other than Toshiro Hitsugaya. Hitsugaya found Momo's body after Aizen had stabbed her. In chapter 391, we see how Aizen had used Kyoka Suigetsu to confuse Hitsugaya into stabbing Momo. If Aizen doesn't reveal himself to be a traitor, I believe that Aizen and Hitsugaya would have had a good working relationship. Because in chapter minus 12.5, we see that Aizen and Hitsugaya actually did get along. We see how Hitsugaya, Rangiku, Aizen, and Momo had met for a firework display in order to celebrate Hitsugaya's birthday. If Aizen has no reason to defect from the Soul Society, then I think that he would have revealed the true abilities of his Zanpakuto to the remaining members of the Gote 13. And I believe that Aizen's Kyokasu Getsu would have been a powerful tool that the Gote 13 could have used against the Quincy during the Thousand Year Blood War arc. Now, with Aizen not being an antagonist, we can speculate that the Soul Society would not experience any significant disturbances until the appearance of Yuhobak and the Quincy. If Aizen remained a good guy, then one major disadvantage is that Ichigo was not born. This would result in the Soul Society losing a very valuable asset in their war against the Quincy. Because every one of the captain's bankais would have been stolen by the Quincy, but it was thanks to Ichigo's bankai being unable to be stolen, which had led to Urahara devising a way to return the stolen Bankai to their users by slightly holifying the Shinigami so that the Bankai that the Quincy have stolen end up becoming poisonous to them. If Aizen was a good guy, then I don't think that he would be considered as a special war power by the Quincy. Because Aizen wouldn't receive a power up from the Hokyoku, so nor would he have immortality or the immense amount of Reiatsu that he ends up receiving at the end of the Aranka arc, where he is pretty much transformed into a godlike transcendent being. Without this immense amount of Reiatsu, then I don't think that Kyokasu Yigetsu would have worked on Yuhobak. This is proven by Tokinada within the Can't Be On World light novels. He states that he could not utilize the full potential of Kyokasu Yigetsu because of not having the same level of Reiatsu as Aizen. This is in reference to Tokinada's Zanpakuto, which is able to copy the abilities of other Zanpakuto. Aizen's Kyokasu Yigetsu played a pivotal role during the final assault against Yuhobak, which resulted in Ichigo delivering the final blow which ends up defeating Yuha. Instead of Aizen appearing as an antagonist, we may have seen Tokinada make his move a lot sooner within the story. Tokinada had learned about the truth of the Soul King, and in response, he had desired to create his own Soul King candidate known as Hikone. Hikone was created from the combination of spiritual bodies of the souls of humans, Shinigami, Arankas, and Quincy's. This mishmash of souls was controlled by the brain of Gremi, and Hikone was also embedded with multiple fragments of the Soul King. A antagonist is a critical aspect of any great story. Without conflict, there is no journey. Antagonists are usually the source of an inciting incident which pushes our protagonist into action. Without villains, there is no interesting story to tell. Aizen is based on the Nietzschean philosophy that God is dead. This philosophy is grounded in the idea that society no longer has a use for a god. In this respect, Aizen had embodied this philosophy via his belief that the Soul King was nothing more than a mindless puppet that needed to be overruled. While it's nice to imagine imagine what would have happened if Aizen was a good guy and he had some really good times with all of the Goatee 13 members, but there's no denying that Bleach as a story is way more interesting with Aizen as a villain. Almost 
everything interesting that happens within the plot is undone if you make Aizen a good guy. As much fun as I had speculating about this what if, I think that leaving Aizen as an antagonist is definitely the better choice. Because with this one singular change, the protagonist of Bleach doesn't even exist. So there you have it. This was my video speculating upon how the story of Bleach would have been impacted with Aizen being a good guy. We have reached the point of the video where I want to hand over the discussion to all of you. What do you guys think about this idea of Aizen not defecting from the Soul Society? I've mentioned a lot of ways that the story could have been impacted, but if I've forgotten to mention anything within this video, then definitely let me know by continuing the discussion in the comments. I look forward to reading all of your comments. And lastly, thank you for making it to the end of this one, and I can't wait to see you in my next Bleach Explained video. A massive thank you goes out to all of my amazing Patreon supporters for helping to make this video possible. If you also want to support the channel and see your name in the end of my videos, then check out my Patreon, which has loads of perks like early video access and so much more. Thank you for sticking around till the end of the video, and whatever you contribute will mean a lot to me.